Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you an update on my neck alley reading. I have not done an update since the beginning of February and of January, so it's been about four months. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what are the books that I have read since then for Neck Alley? What are the new books that I have requested and approved for since my last update? And what are some of those books coming down the line that you can expect to see me reviewing in the coming months, upcoming releases that are coming out throughout the rest of the year? Stay tuned and we'll talk about all of it. It has been a minute since I've done one of these neck alley updates. I didn't realize it had been quite so long. I was like, oh wow, that last video went up February 7th. Definitely time to do another update. I'm gonna go over some statistics for the books that I have out from Neck Alley this year to give you kind of an overview at a high level of what are the sorts of things that I have on my plate. And then we're gonna go through all of the new books that have been added since the last video went up. For the books that I have read, I will tell you my thoughts and my star rating, and then I'll let you know what books I have coming up still to review in the rest of the year. So hopefully this will be interesting, give you some idea of what are some of the new releases I've been doing reviews for, things that are on my radar that might also be of interest to you. I do take reviewing as a part of my job fairly seriously, and this is something I spend a lot of time doing. And, and of course, for those of you who've seen my goals video for the year, are we gonna see how poorly I'm doing on my goal of requesting fewer things from Neck Alley? Possibly. <laughs> yes, yes, you will, but it, what, are, what are you gonna do? So let's give a big picture overview of all of the Neck Alley books that are on my 2022 Neck Alley spreadsheet. So these are books that I either had outstanding at the end of 2021, plus books that have been added in the current year. In total, there are 72 books on that list, and 58% of those books are by white authors, which means that only 42% are by Black, Indigenous, or person of color authors. That's a little bit lower than my monthly reading goal, which is to read about 50% of my books from people who are not white. So I do try to be aware of that in my neck alley requesting as well, but it looks like the numbers are a little off. However, 40.3% of them are by queer authors. So I am reading and requesting a lot of LGBTQ books this year, more than even my goal. My goal is 25% of my reading, but it's been consistently higher than that in many months. And I think that's just something that I've really been leaning towards this year. And I'm not upset about it. That may change or shift in coming years, but at least for now, that's a lot of it. One thing that was new since partway through 2021 is that Neck Alley now offers some books as audio review copies. And since I am an audiobook listener, that's something I've taken advantage of. So far, 23.6% of the books on my Neck Alley spreadsheet for 2022 are audiobooks. And part of this is that a much lower number of books are offered as audiobooks than their total number of books, but it is something I've been making use of. In terms of read versus unread or DNF'd. Of the 72 books on that list for the current year, I have DNF'd five, which isn't too bad actually considering how many I've read. 39 of the 72 are read, so I've gotten through a lot of them, and then I currently have 28 outstanding. And uh, looking at when those books are set to be released, I do still have one outstanding from 2021. <sighs> eventually I will get to it. I have one outstanding from 2021. I've got two being published in May. And as of the filming of this video, I'm like 60% of the way through one of those May releases. So I am currently reading that. Then I have four coming out in June, seven in July, nine in August. Like how did I end up with so many in August? I not good planning. Four in September and one in October. So that's kind of overall stats. Now we're going to look at the books that have been added since the last time I filmed an update. This is not going to include all 70 whatever books. This is just going to be the ones that have been added to the list since the beginning of February, which admittedly is kind of a lot. And again, some of these I have already read, so I'll let you know my thoughts. I had one book to add in February. This was Bright Ruined Things by Samantha Coho. This was a 20s inspired magical retelling of The Tempest and I liked it pretty well. I gave it four stars. 
there were two releases in March on the list. The first one was Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. This one I actually DNF'd. I think I got almost halfway into it and it just was way too long and I was not invested. It's a magical retelling of The Great Gatsby that is gender flipped and set in the UK. I like I just found it kind of boring and too long but good atmosphere characters I didn't really care for so I ended up DNFing that one. The other March release was Savage City by Elle Penelope. This is I guess kind of a portal fantasy setup in some ways where a girl ends up in an alternate version of San Francisco that is magical. I liked this but didn't love it and I ended up giving it three stars. For April, I've got five releases to talk about, all of which I have read. First up was In a Garden Burning Gold by Rory Power. This was her adult fantasy debut that was inspired by sort of Byzantine Greek history. I didn't like this very much. I ended up giving it two stars. I have a pretty in-depth review on Goodreads and my Goodreads is always linked down below if you want to go and check that out. But yeah, not impressed with this one. Then I have Very Bad People by Kit Frick. This is a YA thriller. Unfortunately, the formatting of the ebook was really weird and I couldn't read it. So I ended up DNFing it for those reasons and not giving feedback, which is a bummer. If I have access to a different copy of it at some point in the future, I might still be interested in reading it because the, the the premise sounded up my alley but the majority of the book was like gr black words on a gray background so it was really difficult to read and I don't know why they did that it's one of those things that I could see working in a physical book as like cool formatting but for an ebook it was weird so I don't know what was going on with that then I read Spear by Nicola Griffith this was excellent. It was a queer gender flipped novella inspired by Arthurian mythology and I loved it. The prose was beautiful. It was it was excellent. Really enjoyed that one. Then I had Summoning Up Love by Sinethia Williams. I'm a big fan of Sinethia Williams. I like her romance a lot. I ended up liking this and I did pre-order myself a finished copy so obviously I was a fan. I gave this four and a half stars. This is a Harlequin category romance so these are shorter very tropey romances but some of them are very excellent. I think this is a good version of one. This one is the first in a series where each one is going to follow one of three black brothers who are paranormal investigators or ghost hunters. And so this first book follows the oldest brother in the family and the heroine is kind of a skeptic about ghosts and it was great. Lastly for April I had Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. This one was an audio review copy and I didn't like it the way I was hoping to. The pacing didn't quite work for me and tonally it didn't really work for me. Although apparently I'm seeing based on comments on my video where I talked about this some people really like the fact that she has these books that can be horrific and macabre at times but also sweet and lighthearted at others. Like there are people who I think enjoy that element of some of her writing where she doesn't lean into the horror elements as hard for people who don't want that. So you may like that. I didn't enjoy that as much. I kind of wanted her to lean into more of the horror elements and I gave this book two and a half stars had to change the battery but we are back and ready to talk about May releases. I have five May releases on this list and I've currently read three of them. The first one is Wild Seed Witch by Marty Dumas. This one I also had as an audio review copy and it is a middle grade fantasy novel that I ended up really liking. I will say it's worth noting that this is the sort of book that I think could easily be mismarketed because it's got like a magical school and a black girl. It may be marketed alongside things like Amari and the Night Brothers, for instance, that are much more whimsical things that almost feel like an alternate world. This is a very different sort of book. This one follows a teen girl who's about to go into eighth grade who has a beauty YouTube channel that she's trying to grow and she finds out that she has magic the summer before she goes into eighth grade and ends up getting invited to a secret magical sort of finishing school that's about like etiquette but also magic and she ends up attending but having to deal with feeling like she doesn't fit in with all of these kind of elite girls from these families with long lines of witches where she's just a wild seed witch because her family doesn't have witches in it. And uh, there's a lot of mean girl stuff in this, which I think will be a turnoff for some people. I do think that there's a lot of growth that happens for a main character and for some of the other characters in the book. And 
you know, to be honest, I don't think it's unrealistic to see this kind of behavior for young teenagers. I think it's probably a real thing people deal with, but if that's something that's going to bother you, be aware of it. But yeah, I did end up liking this pretty well. I think just be aware that the the kind of book that it is is more of this contemporary coming of age story with etiquette and mean girl behavior with a side of magic. So there is magic to it, but I wouldn't say that that's the primary focus and it doesn't feel so much like a different world. It's more related directly to our real world. I ended up giving this book four stars. Next up is By the Book by Jasmine Guillory. This one was definitely a disappointment. I was excited about it because I had read the first book in this series where they're having authors come and do these contemporary romance retellings of Disney princess stories. So Julie Murphy did a Cinderella one that was fantastic. I was hoping I would like this because it's Beauty and the Beast inspired. Even though I have been pretty hit and miss with Jasmine Guillory's writing in the past, I've liked some of her books, so I had high hopes. This I did not end up liking. Yeah, so much potential. The execution, in my opinion, wasn't great, and I gave this one two stars. The final May release that I've already read is The Counselors by Jessica Goodman. This one is a YA mystery set at a sleepaway summer camp, and I, I liked this okay. I've been hit and miss with Jessica Goodman's books. I really, really loved her second book. Her debut was just okay for me, and this one was also just okay for me. I do think that people who have nostalgia for this kind of camp might really love it in a way that I didn't, because it does spend a lot of time on the nostalgia piece of it. I didn't attend this kind of a summer camp when I was growing up, and so I don't necessarily have that. And I don't know, it was it was fine. I gave it three stars. I didn't dislike it, but I didn't love it either. It is very summery though, and it's one where I can see some people really loving it. The May release that I am currently reading is Summer's Edge by Dana Melly. So good, so good. <laughs> Like, I'm I'm really into this. I read Dana Melly's debut novel a few years ago, People Like Us, and I was a huge fan of it and had been waiting for her to come out with a new book, and she finally did. This one is very summery, and the pitch is The Haunting of Hill House meets Rebecca, but it's YA. It's like a YA kind of supernatural thriller, par paranormal thriller, I guess you could say, and I'm really into it. It's about a kind of toxic friend group that is spending time at a summer house the year after their best friend died in a fire at that house. It's interesting. So I'm like 60% of the way through it. So far I'm loving it and I feel like a lot of people are gonna like this one. It's also very queer, the main character for the first part of the book, because we do switch perspectives like halfway through, but for the first half of the book, the main character is bisexual. Things get very messy though, because there's an ex-girlfriend and an ex-boyfriend who are there during the summer, and there's a lot of like messy drama, so definitely worth a look if that sounds up your alley. And then the other one that I haven't read yet is Primal Animals by Julia Lynn Rubin. This I have as an audio review copy, so I do anticipate getting to this before the end of the month. It looks really interesting. This is another kind of summery camp horror thriller with queer characters and I'm I'm kind of excited for it. Let me let me look it up. Hold on. Our main character has a crush on a girl in her cabin and then she's tapped to join a strange secret society and then things I think get weird from there. So I'm very excited to read this one and see see what I think. Moving on, let's talk June releases. There are five of them. Two of them I've already read and one of them I am currently reading. So the ones I've read are A Mirror Amended by Alexi Harrow. This is the second book in a novella duology. I really loved Spindle Splintered, which was her first one. That one was kind of loosely based on Sleeping Beauty. This one is loosely based on Snow White. I did not end up liking it nearly as much. I gave this one two and a half stars. It was a little bit disappointing for me. I've also read January 15th by Rachel Swirsky. I really liked this. I read this for Tor.comathon and so I talk about it in a reading vlog that I can link up above if you want to check it out. But this was very interesting. It's a novella that's kind of a thought experiment about what if the United States had a universal basic income payment that people got every year where everybody regardless of class or wealth or whatever got this payment. So the novella takes place all on one day, January 15th, which is the day that people get their payment, and it follows four different perspectives during that day. 
One is a group of elite wealthy teenagers who are really privileged and waste their money. One is following a woman and her two kids who are on the run from her abusive ex-wife and the this income payment allowed her to leave her wife. One of them follows a young black woman who is a journalist and the caregiver for her teenage sister and she's going around interviewing people about their thoughts on this payment and the day and how things are going. And then the last one follows a pregnant teenager who is part of a polygamist cult. So it's a really interesting novella. I wanted it to go a little bit farther in terms of like the analysis piece of it but I think it's really good and I gave it four stars. The one that I am currently reading I actually just got a finished copy of in the mail from the publisher so I have this to show you. Um, this is A Matter of Temptation by Stacey Reed. I love Stacey Reed. She writes great historical romances. I am not too far into this one yet but so far I'm really liking it. I think it's interesting. It's got a young woman who dresses up like her brother because she's better at dueling and sword fighting than him and he's like foolishly gotten himself into a duel with this Earl and then I think the Earl is going to be the love interest so I feel like this is going to be great. And then the two I haven't read yet are Go Hunt Me by Kelly DeVos. This one is a YA like gothic horror novel with vampires and a creepy old castle and I don't remember all the details but I've read from Kelly DeVos before and really enjoy the way she does horror comedies so I'm hopeful that this one will be a lot of fun. And then the last one coming out in June is How to Fake a Wedding Date by Karen Booth. I just saw this cover and was like, oh my gosh, like I clearly need to read this. I love that it's got a plus size heroine. It's a brother's best friend romance. And this is another one of those category romances that are pretty short. It's probably like 200 pages, very tropey, but I'm hopeful it'll be fun. I'm hoping we get some good fat representation. We'll, we'll see. Moving on to July releases, I've got six of them and I have only read one. The one that I've read is this one, favorite of the year, A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. I ended up with a physical arc, so I read this also for Tor.comathon and I loved it. I actually love this even more than the first book in this series. Becky Chambers does great soft sci-fi that is undergirded by hard sci-fi and uh, this is just like a hug and a therapy session and um, yeah. I, I love this so much. Also coming out in July is Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. This is a historical romance with a black hero and heroine and I'm really hopeful for this because I just read The Perks of Loving a Wallflower which is the previous book in this series and I loved it so I'm hoping this one will be fun too. We have a hero who's into like spy work and intelligence gathering and a heroine who is there from Africa and has been training to become an elite guardswoman. So I feel like this is going to be great. Next is Bet On It by Jodi Slaughter. I haven't read from Jodi Slaughter before, but I know a lot of people really loved her indie published books. This is her first traditionally published book from what I understand. It's a contemporary romance with a plus size heroine, and I've seen a couple people read and review it early and say that they really liked it, so I'm excited to pick this one up. This is another one that I have as an audiobook. Then we have Young Blood by Sasha Lawrence. I'm hoping this will be good. It sounds right up my alley. It's a YA vampire story at like an elite private school or an elite boarding school with like secret societies and stuff and I am just so into that stuff so I, I'm hoping this one will be fun and it's supposed to be very queer. Definitely looking forward to that. Then we've got The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. Y'all know I'm gonna read anything by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. I love her. She's become an autobi author for me and this one sounds interesting. It's a reimagining of the story of the island of Dr. Moreau and I, I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with it. The final July release is A Half-Built Garden by Ruthanna Emrys. This one I also actually got a physical copy of from Tor, so I might be reading it that way, but this sounded really interesting. This author is being called a literary descendant of Ursula K. Le Guin, and this is a novel of extraterrestrial diplomacy and urgent climate repair. I'm definitely interested in this. I feel like the cover is beautiful. I like a lot of what Tor.com puts out, so I'm hoping this is going to be a really great beautifully written sci-fi book. We'll move on to August and I have not read any of the other books for the rest of the year that I have so far. First up is Every Rogue Has His Charm by Susanna Craig. I've just been getting all of the books in this series because I've really enjoyed them. They're these kind of rompy historical romances with spies in them and like strong heroines. I'm not exactly sure what the plot of this one is but I do know it's the fourth book in the series and I've enjoyed all of them so I'm planning to read this one. Then we have The Hookup Plan by Farrah Rashone. This is the third and final book in a series of contemporary romances with three girlfriends. I've read 
read the other two, so I want to finish it up with this last one and see what happens. So this one is supposedly an enemies to lovers, but I think maybe high school enemies. Our heroine is a stressed out pediatric surgeon, and the hero is, I think, a billionaire who's back for her high school reunion. So hopefully this will be fun. Then we have These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. This is a YA gothic horror thriller, and I have really liked what I've read from Kate Alice Marshall before. I am a sucker for anything gothic, especially if it's from an author who I know I'm probably gonna have a good time with. This one is being pitched as The Haunting of Hill House meets Knives Out, which sounds great. It's got a creepy estate and a inheritance that somebody's trying to get. I feel like it's gonna be a good time. Then we have Fury Song by Rosaria Munda. I love this series. I think it is one of the best YA fantasy series that's coming out right now. It's really interesting politically. It's got a lot of drama. It's just very excellently written. And I think this might be the final book. I'm not 100% sure, but book two left us on a major cliffhanger and I am anxious to see what's going to happen next. Allie Hazelwood is releasing her next full-length novel with Love on the Brain. This is another one following scientists where a woman has to work with her nemesis on a science project and uh, they end up falling for each other. I enjoyed the love hypothesis and I've enjoyed other things I've read from her so I'm hoping this will be fun. Also coming out in August is Aphrodite and the Duke by J.J. McAvoy. This is being pitched as good for fans of Bridgerton. It's a second chance romance with a jilted heroine and I'm, I'm hoping it'll be fun. I love the cover. And then the final one for August is another YA thriller, I think. This is Seaton Girls by Charlene Thomas. This one is a debut novel that's being called Smart and Twisty that starts off like Friday Night Lights and ends with the power and insight of dear white people. So I guess this isn't so much a thriller, it's more of like a smart contemporary that's dealing with more serious race related issues and has football as an element. I don't know, it sounded interesting, so we'll give it a try. And with that, let's move on to September. I've got four books to talk about. The first one is Lucky Girl by Mary Rickert. This is a horror novella coming out through Tor.com and it is a Krampus story. So it's a horror novel told across Christmases, rooted in loneliness, horror, and the ever lurking presence of Krampus. Definitely excited to give this one a try. I'm, I'm hoping it'll be fun and creepy. Then Courtney Summers is coming out with a new book. This is I'm the Girl. I have really enjoyed other things that I've read from Courtney Summers and so this was an easy one to ask for. This is a queer YA thriller. It says when 16 year old Georgia Avis discovers the dead body of 13 year old Ashley James, she teams up with Ashley's older sister Nora to find and bring the killer to justice before he strikes again. But their investigation throws Georgia into a world of unimaginable privilege and wealth without conscience or consequence. And as Ashley's killer closes in, Georgia will discover when money, power, and beauty rule, it might not be a matter of who is guilty, but who is guiltiest. So it sounds like an interesting thriller, definitely hard hitting, which is unsurprising given the author looking forward to it. Then I have A Merry Little Meat Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. This is a holiday romance that they co-wrote that just looked really adorable. It says it's a steamy plus-sized holiday rom-com about an adult film star who is semi-accidentally cast as a lead in a family-friendly Christmas movie <laughs> and the former bad boy pop star she falls in love with. I mean honestly that premise sounds amazing. So she's a plus size adult film star who accidentally ends up in like a Hallmark movie. I, I feel like this is going to be a blast. Lastly for September is another horror novel and this one is a debut from Tor called Leech by Hiren Ennis. It says a surreal and horrifying debut. This defies our understanding of identity, heredity, and bodily autonomy. A wonderful new entry to gothic science fiction, impeccably clever and atmospheric. Think Wuthering Heights with worms, said Tamsin Muir. I mean, this sounds very intriguing and it's a lot of the things that I like in horror. Again, I told you gothic horror is kind of a hook for me, so I'm excited to try this one out. Lastly, I've got one October release and I'm very excited for this because I am kind of friends with the author. So uh, heads up about that, but I also genuinely enjoy her writing and have 
since before I knew her, but Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dunn is coming out on October 4th. This is a YA murder mystery that had the working title before it had an official title of Murder She Texted. Um, so if that tells you anything, I feel like it's going to be fun. Alexa Dunn writes really good soapy, twisty YA stuff, so I'm excited for this. Seaview High's Homecoming Queen is dead, and she's not the first. This is a nonstop thriller about a decades old mystery, a copycat killing, and the teen who won't stop until she discovers the truth. After the death of her mom, screw cancer, 17 year old Cecilia Ellis goes on to live with her estranged grandmother, a celebrated author whose Victorian mansion is as creepy as the murder mysteries she writes. On the surface, life is utterly ordinary in the California coastal town until the homecoming queen is murdered, and she's not Seaview's first pretty dead queen. With a copycat killer on the loose, Cecilia throws herself into the investigation, determined to crack the case like the heroines in her grandmother's books. But the more Cecilia digs into the town's secrets, the more she worries that her own mystery might not have a storybook ending. I feel like this is going to be a blast. I'm very excited to read it. And congrats to Alexa on another book coming out. So there you go. Those are all of the books that have been added to my Neck Alley TBR since the beginning of February. Um, a lot of really exciting things, a lot of interesting stuff coming out in the later part of the year. And hopefully this was interesting and helpful for all of you who are looking for what are upcoming releases you want to check out. This will also give you an idea of some of the things you can expect to see me reviewing in the coming months. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, I would love to hear one of two things. Either which of these are you really interested to hear me review? Like what's the one where you're like, I really want to see what the feedback on that is? Or what is an upcoming release this year that you're really excited to read? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.